Hello and welcome back and today we're going to do a complete strip down of the brand new Synology DS920. We've got a few questions about this device on the inside but let's be honest if you're probably in like the 80% bracket they're watching this video because you want to know what they've done with the memory. This device arrives with 4 gig of memory and you can upgrade it with another 4 gig of memory but you can only access one of the slots. So what has Synology done with the other memory module? Is it um, is it soldered? Is it another slot that's covered? And although I have unboxed the 720 and the 220 prior to this and found the memory soldered, I still don't know for certain what the memory situation is on this. I know how to take it apart, but this will be as much of a surprise to me as it will be to you there at home. But a few disclaimers straight off the bat. First and foremost, this video will mostly be filmed at this angle. So although you can see me now, let's be realistic. You're not here for me, you're here for this. So this will take up the bulk of the screen. Secondly, I'm doing this so you don't have to. If you do this, almost certainly you're going to invalidate your warranty and it's not worth gambling. So I'm doing this to save you the bother of stripping your unit down and finding this out. So hopefully watching this is going to save you a few bob. Thirdly, make sure you've got the device safely powered down, utilizing DSM shutdown, and then make sure you remove all of your media. I'm going to do it now to show you. But just make sure you've got no power connected and you've safely powered down the device when you remove your drives. And the last thing is at the moment, I'm filming this in quite a hot UK June and the temperatures are pretty high and I've got about four NASs all within a distance of about five or six meters, as well as my PC recording there in the background over OBS. So it's quite hot and I can hear fans ramped up. So I apologize if the sound isn't perfect for you guys right now. But without further ado, let's get this out the way and start unboxing this device. So as mentioned, we're gonna get our drive media out. We're using the Seagate Iron Wolves there. Totally unnecessary plug, but it's worth highlighting that you should really try to keep your drives in the same order, putting them back in the, the same as when you remove them. Now. If you're using a Synology hybrid RAID, that shouldn't be much of a problem. You should be able, be able to, with a Synology hybrid RAID, be able to insert the drives in any order you want and the system will recognize it. But don't rely on that. Make sure that if you are gonna do this, that you put the drives back in the way you found them. Now, inside, you can see the one memory module, but we know there's another four gig somewhere in this device. The first thing you need to do is head to the back of the device and remove the following screws. You need to remove this screw here above this USB port and it will become clear later, as well as this screw here. Don't worry too much about the fan screws on the rear. The system will take care of itself in that regard. Now there is gonna be these screw holes here, but they're empty, the reason being they're for the eSATA. So don't worry too much about that. And finally, you've got this screw here and this screw here that keep on half of the chassis design of this device. So although you're not really gonna see it much at this angle, those are the screws that I'm going to remove. It's also worth highlighting that you're going to want a Phillips crosshead screwdriver there and make sure it's magnetic. You're definitely going to want a magnetic screwdriver here because it's very easy to loose screws through some of the vents while going through this. Now, let's remove the screws. So first, I'm gonna take that rear-based one there in the corner. And again, you don't have to remove the screws that you're going to be removed uh, uh, around the fans because the fans are removed connected to the outside of the chassis. You will have to disconnect a power connector, but for the most part, you should be fine. Um, also, try to keep track of which screws you're removing because these aren't all identical. And although I do not recommend you guys at home to do this yourselves, you might still ignore this and want to do it for yourself. And you're watching this video so you know what to do. Just make sure you keep track of which screws you remove. And again, I know I keep being repeat, uh, repetitive and I know I'm an, a nagging Nelly here, but this will almost certainly invalidate your warranty. So do bear that in mind. So I've removed those screws. And now by sliding the front of the chassis, we should be able to remove the external casing on this device. As you can see, it's clicked open, and then we can remove that external panel 
And now we've got the internal framework of our NAS. That's the external box. And I'm sorry if there's loud banging near the mic. The mic is right here um, uh, while I'm filming. So again, it's probably not ideal for a number of you out there with sensitive hearing, but that's the external chassis removed. And now we've got the bulk of the main device. Before we go further, let's take a good look at what we have here. So on the base, we've got our two NVMe SSD bays connected to a small PCI connector. We have a glued connector here that leads to that USB 3 port. That's why we needed to remove that screw. Although there are two more screws inside that manage that USB port. We have to make sure we remove this plastic clip here and this plastic clip as these attach the rear fans to the internal assembly and the main plan here is to remove this device and the board in here everything else the fans and this rear plastic bit can all stay there so the next thing we need to do is to remove the following eight screws so we have to remove the two here the two here the two here and the two here. The reason we removed those screws is they will allow us to lift up this external chassis area and access the board. But make sure the first thing you remove are those two plastic clips we mentioned earlier. These plastic clips keep the fans attached to the main drive assembly and both clips will lift off. They're just both held in with an individual screw clip each. So there we go, we've got one clip removed and another clip removed. Keep those with the screws. So next thing we want to do, as you can see, we're already seeing movement here, is we want to remove those eight screws at either side. Now, one screw is keeping this chassis here of the SATA base connected to the back panel and the other screw is removing the back panel from this plastic assembly. One screw is a lot longer than the other to reach all the way through to the other side. So let's start removing them. Now, also bear in mind while you're doing this that um, when you're taking this apart, you will need a relatively long screw here to get to some of these screws because they're quite well contained in the corners. And if you've got a fat screwdriver, you're not gonna be able to work around the edge of that casing. Now, I'm choosing to disassemble this at what I would say is one of the worst angles possible where I can only see this screw due to the camera that you guys are watching. So I'm sure you guys could do this a lot quicker than me. So if I move it there, I might get a better angle on those. And then we can carry on removing these. Now, as mentioned, I have an inkling what I'm going to find at the end here. Now, good for you, you're watching this on a video since I've recorded it, so you could just fast forward. Good for you, I mean, I can't. I'm stuck here doing this the slow way. So maybe you could carry on watching and keep me company here um, while I take this apart. I could fast forward this, but I don't want you guys to feel like any part gets skipped. And if you're gonna do this for yourself, you probably want to research every part of what you're doing to make sure you do it right. If we remove it there, and again, there should be a link in the description to NAS Compares, which has got a full photographic breakdown of what we're doing today. So if you're finding that this video isn't clear enough for you, you should be able to go into that, and it has all the angular photos and all of the screws you have to take apart in the right order. So we carry on, get that out of there. And remember, we're not going to detach the internal framework from the internal SATA boards. We're not looking to do that. All we're trying to do is get to the main controller board where that memory module and the CPU, the J4125, live. Because we want to know what Synology have done with the memory, and moreover, kind of what makes up this device. Where's your money going? What do you get for your money? So we've now removed the internal framework there, and now we can lift out that main chassis there from the internal panel now you can already see that cable there now that cable connects power to both of those fans there is both the two power connectors and a small piece of electronic tape that keeps those bays in place if you have a look you've got two very pc familiar connectors there 
the white connectors there that connect those fans. So what we need to do is simply remove both of those connectors like so, and then they will lift up from underneath the tape. The tape, you want to keep it there, but that's the tape that held those wires in place. So now we're done with the fan assembly and the other half of that chassis. And now we're just looking at the internal framework. Now we can see that USB connector that we talked about earlier on that holds the USB cable to the internal assembly. Now we need to get to those two screws that hold the USB cable in place. The reason being is you have to make sure when you disconnect the internal um, board with this framework that when you're doing it, you're able to separate the two and not bend or elongate or effectively damage those cables. Because with the exception of the screws we're removing and that USB port that we're unscrewing now, the rest of this device is held together to, between the SATA connector board and the internal controller board with two parallel PCIe connectors. So if we remove those there, we can turn the device around and as you can see we have the PCIe connector there and we have another PCIe connector there that's connecting our SATA board now if we turn the device over we can also see our first glimpse of that CPU we're going to try and not let the fan screw this uh, the light screw this up there is the main heatsink that covers our CPU that Intel J4125 we also have at the bottom there a module there of flash memory this is where the default dsm arrives when it performs its internal installation we've also got a cmos battery for storing the system information and the core controller bios there for the synology ds920 so let's remove the usb connector from its housing array and now we just need to separate the SATA board from the main controller board. Apparently, this is not the same as the other chassis and there is one more secret little screw just under there. So now we need to remove these two NVMe bays here. If we remove the board from the main assembly, that board will remain connected to the controller board and should allow us to access that additional screw. We remove that screw there and there are three screws that hold the NVMe M2 connector there. And we can remove those screws, all three from the top, and it will allow us to remove that NVMe SSD board. That is where the NVMe's live and it connects to that tiny little PCIe based connector there so let's pop that there and as we can see now we've revealed the screw that was causing all of the problems that one there once we remove that screw we'll be able to access the internal controller board there is the screw removed let's keep the nvme and those core screws together and now we're able to just disconnect the SATA assembly now there's our SATA base connected by the PCIe on the edge and that PCIe slot we move that there connects to that main controller board there just next to the USB connector we've seen here now after this video I am going to research if it's possible to attach a USB 3.1 gen 2 connector to this and enable faster USB, maybe on another video, a DIY one. But for now, let's move over to the other side of the board and look at this device. Now we've got four screws at each corner of this board. We need to remove those four screws to get to the other side of this board. And that's going to be the business end for us. So let's remove all four of those screws. And once again, I'm doing this so you guys don't have to, and I should probably be wearing anti-static gloves while doing this. But I think for the most part, as long as you ground yourself and don't get, don't be in a static environment to a degree, you should be absolutely fine. But just be cautious.
and particularly with your screwdriver because anyone that's ever made even the tiniest scratch with a PCIe card on the internal of a PC while installing a graphics card or something will be well aware of the damage you can do with a simple scratch in the wrong place on a PCB on one of these devices. So now we've removed the internal uh, cover there that was covering our memory module. We'll pop that there. And much like we suspected, here is our single sodium module from earlier and four Samsung memory chips. For those of you, let's move that to an angle that you can see a little better. Now, the NAS Compare article should detail what those chips are. They are the same modules that we've seen in the previous Synologies that we've dismantled in the 2020 series of their soldered memory. It's definitely a move from the company to make people not be able to use unofficial memory. And also, there are inherent benefits to memory modules soldered to the board. It does limit your upgrade options, but given that this CPU is supposed to support only up to eight gig of memory, there is an argument that a soldered four gig is nothing but useful, and it probably increases the freq uh, the access time by a small, um, increases the access speed, sorry, uh, a marginal degree. Now, I know when I did my unboxings for uh, a few of the other Synology 20s, you guys all sort of highlighted the fact that Synology are using Samsung memory there. Um, and, you know, given that they say, oh, we only use our own memory, but let's be realistic, Synology memory almost certainly is made in partnership with another brand. Um, and it, obviously they test it to their degree before it gets inside. But we can see those two PCIe connectors for the main SATA board and the NVMe board. On the base of it there, we can make out the connections there for our eSATA and those two LAN ports. And of course, the USB connector is its own separate board um, connector there as well, going straight into there. Now it is glued, I don't know how well you can see the glue there, but I am going to look into the possibility of upgrading this Synology NAS to a faster USB connection, or if that is a proprietary port that we're not able to take advantage of. But once again, that is for another video. But this has been my strip down of the Synology DS920. And at least now we know what the memory situation is on this. But if you've got any questions about this device, do let me know in the comments. And once again, in the description, there's a full photographic breakdown of what we've done today that will show you all of the chips and boards in their glory. But thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, do click like. It helps me understand what you guys like in these videos and what I can make more of to keep you guys chuffed. Otherwise, click subscribe to learn more, and I will see you next time.